Hi students, welcome to Engineering Graphics class. I am Dr. Vinod Kumar. In this video, we are going to solve or discuss very important question, a very important question from perspective projection. It's about a hexagonal nut. The question says a hexagonal nut, 32 mm side, is resting on the ground on the face with one vertical edge on the picture plane. What do you know about a hexagonal nut? A hexagonal nut is nothing but a hexagonal prism with a hole, threaded hole at the center. If the side of the prism is say A, the height of the prism is also A and the diameter of the hole at the center is also A. So a hexagonal nut 30 mm side completely define it. It is a hexagonal prism of 30 mm side with a height of 30 mm with a circular hole of 30 mm diameter at the geometrical center. So that the axis of the prism and the axis of the cylindrical hole coincide. In this case it is a hexagonal nut of 32 mm side resting on the ground with a vertical edge touching picture plane in such a way that one side of the hexagon makes 10 degrees to PT. So what I do is, I draw a picture plane PP and draw a hexagon with a corner touching picture plane and one side of 32 mm touching picture, one side, one corner touching picture plane and one side making 10 degrees to picture plane and I draw the or complete the hexagon. Hexagonal prism has got A, B, C, D, E, F on the base. G, H, I, J, K, L on the top. Agree? It's a hexagonal prism. I find the center and draw a circle of 32 mm diameter. 16 mm, 16 mm radius or 32 mm diameter. That completes the plan of the nut. The station point is in front of the axis, right in front of or the central plane passes through the axis of the nut. So, I find the center and draw a line and the station point is 60 mm away from PP. So, 60 mm away I locate SP. SP is the station point. Then I draw HL anywhere, preferably below SP and the height of the station point is 60 mm above the ground. So, 60 mm below I draw GL. I repeat, I draw picture plane, draw the hexagon with one corner touching picture plane and one side making 10 degrees to picture plane. Draw the circle at the center, 32 mm diameter. Then I draw the central plane and 60 mm in front, I locate SP. I draw HL and 60 mm below HL, I draw GL. The basic drawing is over. Now, you know this can be drawn by two methods. One is called the vanishing point method and the other is called the visual drawing method. Let us see what happens if you use visual drawing method. This is SP. So right below SP on HL is SP dash. Now, you have to join all points of the object to SP. Draw the elevation of the nut here. You have got points 6 plus 6, 12 points of the hexagon, hexagonal prism. Join all those points to SP dash and then drop the intercepts. It will be very complicated. There is 99% possibility that you go wrong while dropping the intercepts and the total drawings will mess up here. So what I do is, I will go for vanishing point method. Then let us think how vanishing point can be adopted. There is one side like this and another side parallel to that. One side like this, one side parallel to that. One side like this, one side parallel to that. That means you have to draw three vanishing points. That will again be complicated. My idea is to inscribe the prism in a box. Draw the box, locate the points of the hexagonal prism inside the box and complete the hexagonal prism. That is my plan. Therefore, I inscribe it in a box. You have to very judiciously select the box. This is the box I am selecting. I take this side. Two lines. Draw 
draw a line draw a line what do i get i get a box and i name the box 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 what is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it is the box inside which the hexagonal prism is inscribed my first task now is to draw the perspective view of the box 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 forget the prism forget the hexagonal prism consider only the box 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 and draw the perspective view of the prism uh, of, of the box and inside the box locate the points of the prism okay to draw the box what do you need you need the vanishing point of this side how do you do that how do you find that draw a line parallel to this side through sp small v1 drop it down to hl you get capital v1 what is capital v1 capital v1 is the vanishing point of this side similarly find the vanishing point of this side by drawing a line through sp parallel to that side agree this is small v2 drop it down to hl what do you get i get capital v2 what is capital v2 capital v2 is the vanishing point of this side and all lines parallel to this side okay now i am considering this point and i name it mn it's a point on the box which crosses pitch plane m is on 1 2 m is on 1 2 and n is on 5 6 agree drop drop ag is already on the box as well as on the prism drop ag down first of all drop mn down then drop ag down what do i get i get a here and m here agree now measure 32 mm above a what do i get i get g measure 32 mm above m i get n join a to b v1 and extend a to b1 and extend join g to b1 and extend join n to b2 and extend join m to b2 and extend what is this this is 1 and this is 5 connect 1 5 supposed to be vertical when i have drawn doesn't look vertical it has to come vertical this is one one five drop the intercept of 26 drop the intercept of 
what is this this is 2 this is 6 this is 4 this is 8 I join 6 to this vanishing point Eight to that vanishing point. What do I get? I get I get 7. Now, what you have got? You have got 1, 2, you can also join 2 to this punishing point. Four to that vanishing point. This is three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Agreed? You have got the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the box inside which the hexagonal prism is inscribed. Now what? Drop the intercepts of B, C, D, E and F. Intercept of FL, intercept of FL, intercept of BH, Intercept of DJ. Intercept of CA. Intercept of EK. Now connect. Connect what? GH which is here GH HI IJ JK KL and GL then vertical lines
AF, AB. We can see B doesn't touch the GL, it will be about GL. So I have drawn AB and AF. If you want to draw the dotted lines, you can also draw them. This will be dotted. This will be dotted. This will be dotted. And this will be dotted. And these vertical lines also will be dotted. This also will be dotted. You can see, you can see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. That is the hexagonal prism. That is a hexagonal prism. Now what? You have got a circle. You have got a circle. The hole. You have to take few points on the circle. I take eight points on the circle. If I connect D and F, it will be tangential to the circle. And also A and C will be tangential to the circle. I draw two more lines parallel to them. So that I get eight points on the circle. I call them as nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Agreed? And I call these points P, Q, R, S. This is G. Coincide. Drop them down. Drop these points down. I drop S down first. R Q P Then 32 mm away or above in the same level of G and N I draw a horizontal line and this is P Q P, Q, R, yes, P, Q, R, S. Join this P, Q, R, S to that vanishing point because these lines have got that vanishing point. Here you have got another set of points P1, Q1, R1, S1 because it's a through hole. Throughout the external person, the hole exists. So, Join all these points to that vanishing point. Very careful. Now, onto those lines, drop the intercept of 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. How do you get the intercepts of those points? Join them to SP.
drop them to these lines. Intercept of 9. Intercept of 9 will be on. Drop down to R. This is 9. Intercept of 10. Intercept of 11. Intercept of 12. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Let's identify the points. The points are so close, let's very carefully identify them. This is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Connect them by a smooth curve. Connect them by a smooth curve. You get an ellipse. Similarly, you have to join all these points to the vanishing point and extend the intercepts to the bottom so that you will get a bigger ellipse here. Bigger ellipse here. Wider ellipse rather. And then you have to draw two tangents on either sides. This will be dotted. That's the solution. When you draw with the pencil, you can control the darkness of the lines so that it will look much, much better than what I have drawn. Some of my lines are very close so that they, doesn't, they do not look good. But when you draw, these lines will be good enough and it will be better, much better than what I have drawn. I hope you understand. It's a very, very good question. If you approach it systematically by inscribing it in the box, draw the box and then draw the hexagon and then locate the points of the circle and project them, drop the intercepts to the concerned points, concerned lines. You'll get beautiful figure. When you draw this with instruments in your not in a piece of paper, it will be far, far better than what I have drawn. But I am trying to give you the basic ideas with which how it is drawn. It's a little bit time consuming. You have to practice it before the examination. I hope you understand. Okay. If you have got any doubt regarding this problem, if you have got any doubt regarding this problem, you can contact me. You can contact me. 944-66-06906. You can contact me over phone. You can drop comments. I will respond to the comments. Practice this. Draw and practice this. It's a very, very interesting question. Similarly, you can have a hole on a pentagonal prism. You can have a hole on a square prism or even a triangular prism. It is having the effect of two solids. One is the prism. Other is the... Actually, this is drawn as assuming three solids. One is the box. 
second is the hexagonal prism, third is the cylinder. If you take three vanishing points of the hexagonal prism, you can draw it as two solids, but that will be more complicated than this. This is the easiest way of drawing it. I tell you, this is the easiest way of drawing this question. I hope you will practice this. Okay. If you are impressed with the presentation, please subscribe my channel, share it among your friends and also like it. Okay. Thank you.